Hey guys, welcome back. This video is about a very special floor standing speaker, the Proact D20. The D20 is from the response range of speakers from Proac. And the response range is just one step away from the flagship K-series range. The D20R is the second floor standing speaker in, the, in this response range. The D20 is available with a soft dome tweeter or a ribbon tweeter. Uh, so as you can see, this model here is the D20R, R stands for the ribbon. The model with the soft dome tweeter is called the D20S. The D20 is available in standard finishes like um, natural oak, walnut, mahogany, black ash, and gloss white. Um, and it sells for 5,800 USD. There are premium finishes as well. Rosewood and this particular finish, Ebony, costs a premium and it's an additional 700 USD. Physically, the D20R is petite. It's about 38 inches tall, seven and a half inches wide and about nine inches deep. It has a wider plinth base with adjustable spikes. So the footprint is slightly wider at about 13 and a half by nine inches. The plinth base also serves as a platform for the base loading of the down firing port. The cabinet's base loading at the bottom is derived from the higher D30 and D48 models. And this method of base loading is supposed to assist with easy room integration. And I can agree with that 100%. More of this in the sound quality impressions section. The cabinet is veneered MDF and it is internally damped with bitumen and wool. The base unit is a six and a half inch or 165 millimeter glass fiber weave woofer. The ribbon high frequency here is also found on higher models like the D30 and the D40 and even the R6. And it's started to be lighter than a human hair with rear chamber damping and Alnico magnet. So this is a very easy to drive 8 ohm impedance at about an 88 dB sensitivity. The bottom end is rated at 28 Hertz and the recommended amplification wattage is anywhere from 20 to 180 Watts. I've spent over a month with these speakers and I powered them with my modest Parasound A23 power amp and the really excellent Manly Jumbo Shrimp preamplifier that you see in the middle of the shelf. The Riga P10 with the Aphelion MC and the Koetsu uh, black moving coil and the Manly Chinook phono stage were the analog front end. So coming back to my previous comment about easy room integration um, these speakers were really easy to integrate into my basements. My basement's kind of odd shaped, but generally it's about 33 by 32 feet. Um, and base integration is really difficult to achieve in this room for me. Either there's too much or there's too little. And it usually takes a while to find the optimal balance, articulate base response and sound stage depth. These were very easy to place in my space here. I ended up placing them about seven feet apart, four feet from the front wall, and towed them in directly towards my listening seat, which is about 12 feet away. The first impressions here are massive, open, deep, airy soundstage, tight, defined, quick bass, open sounding and very expressive mid-range. The treble sounded so much like a natural extension of the mid-range, very resolving, airy, and very cohesive, not bright sounding at all. Okay, now to some album examples. For vocals and piano, Bill Evans and the Swedish singer Monica Zutland, and the album's called Waltz for Derby. The second track is actually a Swedish name. I'm not going to butcher it but in English it's translated to a beautiful rose. I've heard this song so many times, but this is the best rendition ever. 
via these D20Rs. The vocal delivery is amazing, absolutely haunting and so present and vivid in the room. Bill Evans' piano sounds tone perfect and perfectly complementing Zutulin's voice. This D20 reproduced the piano just perfect and those snare drum brushes sounded clear, airy and shimmery and the soundstage depth effect was superb. It placed the drums in an area maybe a foot behind the vocals in the piano and was very stable and again very vivid. Uh, next album, let's talk a little more about piano. This is Thelonious Monk's Straight Note Chaser. Piano reproduction through the D20s is again just tonally just right sounding perfect weight and timing as well the sustain and decay of trailing notes are a spookily real sounding tenor sax also sounds full rich and open the bass drum kicks sound tight punchy and articulate plenty of room filling bass uh, but more importantly very articulate bass the sound stage is again perfectly organized and you get to immediately enjoy the arrangement of the instruments and they're so easily layered and they sound so present in the room yes the size of the speakers uh, they belie the bass output that they're capable of and it completely surprised i had to go keep checking and make sure that my subwoofers were turned off and uh and they were powered, as you can see, just by a mere uh, 100 watts uh, with the Parasound 823s. So next is one more album. This is called African Rock by Akira Ishikawa and his Count Buffaloes. This is a superb fusion of rock, jazz, and African music. Very unique. The first track is called prayer and has this gorgeous sounding humming and it builds slowly into a soft tempo with stunning instruments textures layered beautifully next track is called dawn man again i was so surprised by the big impactful but very tuneful and articulate bass coming out of these speakers in this big, big room. Same with the snare rim shots. Impactful and punchy, but very resolving and textured. Where, by texture I mean the, so the sound of the sticks hitting the skin of the drum. And the piano delivery again sounds amazing. The tone is just gorgeous sounding. The last track here is called Hunting. There's a drum solo in this track towards the end. The dynamics and the clarity and the sound stage showcasing. This is a great album. This entire album is a great demo to show off tone, sound stage depth, resolution and dynamics of your system. So as you can see, I am just completely love these guys. As far as comparisons are concerned, it betters some of my older references that I had owned, the Harbeth SHL5. It, the speakers just better in tone, resolution, and bass articulation. Now, I haven't heard the SHL5 Plus. I should also say, I think they better even my reference 4Pi speakers in bass articulation and overall resolution as well. Now, for some people, I think these could end the search for perfect speakers. Yes, no speaker is perfect, but it's all about right compromises at the right price range and this is probably where my balance lies now guys if you are in northwest ohio or in metro detroit i recommend you visit no noise hi-fi this pair will be on demo after i return it to them no noise are dealers for proac fine audio gershman acoustics cord electronics riga and a whole bunch of really cool high quality hi-fi systems if you're in the market for a high quality speaker system in this price range you owe it to yourself to give them a listen 
go to no noise hi-fi and give them a listen you may you just may be as impressed as i am thank you for watching my friends i hope you enjoyed this video there's more to come soon